Swaminati Namane Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Um Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4, Chapter 31, Text 7, Translation and Commentary by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Tat Naha Pradyotaya Adhyatma Jnanam Tattva Artha Darshanam Yena Anjasa Tarishyamaha Dustaram Bhava Sagaram Tanna Pradyota Yadyama Jnanam Tattvartha Darshanam Inanjasa Inanjasa Tarishyamo Mistakes in the writing on the board. Dustaram bhavasagaram. So many mistakes here. Anyway, you can listen to me and instead of reading it on the board, you'll get a better, better. Tana pradyotaya Uh, I'm going to stop the reading because it's there's so many mistakes in the right there w letters left out and diacritical marks in the wrong place and all kinds of things. I'll just read it from here one more time. Tanna pradyota yadhyatma jnanam tattvarta darshanam Yenanja satarishyamo dustaram bhavasagaram. As here it's sagaram. That's one of the mistakes. Tat, therefore, naha, for us, pradyotaya, kindly awaken, adhyatma. Transcendental. Jnanam. Knowledge. Tattva. Absolute truth. Artha. For the purpose of. Darshanam. Philosophy. Yena. By which. Anjasa. Easily. Tarashyamaha. We can cross over. Dustaram, formidable, formidable, Bhavasagaram, the ocean of nescience. Translation Dear Master, kindly enlighten us in transcendental knowledge, which may act as a torchlight by which may we may cross the dark nescience of material existence. This is the Prajetas speaking to Narada. Purport, the Prajetas requested Narada to enlighten them in transcendental knowledge. 
Generally, when a common man meets a saintly person, he wishes to get some material benediction. However, the Prachetas were not interested in material benefit, for they had enjoyed all this sufficiently. Nor did they want the fulfillment of their material desires. They were simply interested in crossing the ocean of nescience. Everyone should be interested in getting out of these material clutches. Everyone should approach a saintly person in order to be enlightened in this connection. One should not bother a saintly person to get blessings for material enjoyment. Generally, householders receive saintly persons to get their blessings, but their real aim is to become happy in the material world. Asking such material benedictions is not recommended in the Shastras. Tanna pradyotayadhyatma Jnanam tattvartha darshanam Yenan jasata rishyamo Dustaram bhavasagaram Dear Master, kindly enlighten us in transcendental knowledge which may act as a torchlight by which we may cross the dark nescience of material existence. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Nanama Pishati Putram Atrasurupam Rupam Tasyagajamuna Purim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramano Radhika Matavasham Prapto Yatsya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tam Natosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Atav Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare For the last few days, <coughs> there has been and for the next, at least today will continue, devotees recounting their memories of Srila Prabhupada from which hopefully we all uh, are inspired with the desire to come closer to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada said if you want to know me then you should do one thing. He specified one thing. So presuming that everyone wants to know Srila Prabhupada they can do this thing, which is to read his books. Srila Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, read my books. The message of the spiritual master is the essential feature of what he does. Here the prachetas are asking for jnanam tatvarta darshanam. They already have darshan of Narad Muni in the sense that they are seeing him. But the real seeing of a saintly person is Shutekshitapata. It means seeing by hearing. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada walked, talked, sat, ate, slept did everything that other human beings do, although we are enjoined not to see the Acharya as an ordinary human being. What distinguishes him is what he said, and what he said is collected in his books. Not that hearing about him is not important, 
although the memories that are recalled, I did notice yesterday that uh, they tend to get embellished, somewhat changed according to the uh, incorrect memory of the persons who are relating them. Uh, therefore, it is more important, uh, how can I say that, that it's because several of the anecdotes that were recounted, they are written in various places and they are retold, but with embellishment, as often happens. That as Srila Prabhupada himself actually did it often in his translations, he would add in the translation itself the bhavart or the, the meaning, the intended, the meaning behind the original spoken words. So these uh, memories, it's not that they're wrong because the, the feeling comes through, but uh, Srila Prabhupada's books are what he himself said, if you want to know me. We can read his books. Within his books we'll also find so many other instructions, such as to associate with devotees and from devotees we'll hear about Srila Prabhupada and so many other topics connected with Krishna consciousness. But it's somewhat analogous to Shruti and Smriti, that Shruti or the, what is considered the original Vedas, Aparushaya, they're not written by anyone. They eternally exist. Veda means knowledge. So Krishna is eternal and knowledge about Krishna is eternal. So in one sense Krishna also didn't write the Vedas. They, did sim they time simultaneously exist with him. So that's considered the by all Vedic schools as the topmost evidence. And then there's Smriti which is composed by great persons in, in uh, the same spirit as Shruti. So that's also considered authoritative but if there's some uh, apparent contradiction between the two or if we need something clarified from Smriti then we shall have to look in Shruti. So it's something like that. What Srila Prabhupada did and said which is not recorded is also important but uh, topmost evidence of what he of his teachings are uh, in his books, the books that he personally uh, gave us. It's also I was thinking yesterday that um, in the in all religious traditions, the life accounts of the uh, founders of those religions are considered very important evidence. In Christianity, it's all based on what Jesus was supposed to have said and done, but it was all written down years after he was there. And uh, just seeing how things can get changed in a short time, we wonder how authoritative it is actually. And then in Islam also there's the Quran and the Hadith and, and Buddhism. There are all kinds of fantastic stories about Buddha, although he was all about his teaching. So we shall have to be very careful in recounting what Srila Prabhupada did, although it's an important evidence, but we shall have to see his books and we'll have to see that in the light of the uh, whole tradition also. So anyway, the subject here is that the Prachetas are asking Narada to enlighten them in transcendental knowledge. They already are enlightened in transcendental knowledge in as much as they were previously blessed by Lord Shiva with uh, extensive instruction 
in transcendental knowledge, but they feel that they need instructing again because for many years they have been involved in family affairs. Now, of course, uh, family affairs are not necessarily uh, destructive of spiritual knowledge. The uh, Mayavad school, or the impersonalist school, they, <coughs> or Shankaracharya especially, he, he insisted that to become spiritually realized one uh, is not possible in family life. And Buddha Dev also set that example of leaving the home considering it to be Maya and got enlightened after many experiments with truth. <clears throat> so uh, that is the general understanding and we find at the beginning of Shukadeva Goswami's teachings also he speaks about the Grihamedhis, those who are tied up to family life. But Vaishnav teaching is that in any station of life one can become fully Krishna conscious. Nevertheless, uh, we do find in the teachings of Shukadeva Goswami and here also in the words of the Prachetas who are uh, in family life, that they, they consider family attachment to be an obstruction in spiritual advancement. Even Kunti Devi, whose relatives on both sides are great devotees of Krishna. She says, Sneha Pashamimang Chindi, Jura Pandushu Vrishnishu. Please break, she prays to Krishna. Please break the strong bonds of attachment that I have for my family members. Of course, it is possible to be attached to pure devotees even in a, a material way. One can be, uh, a mother may be attached to her child who is a great devotee. She may not ha herself have so much. Uh, devotional inclination, but somehow or other because she's attached to a Vaishnava, that will be for her great benefit. Srila Prabhupada once commenting on the uh, Bhagavatam narration of Gajendra, the crocodile. He noted, sorry, Gajendra and the crocodile. He noted how the crocodile was also benefited because for 1,000 years he'd been holding on to the lotus foot of a Vaishnava. Tandera Charana Sevi, Bhakta Saneva, is not exactly considered service, but somehow or other he was very strongly, he very strongly attached himself to the lotus, feet, lotus foot of one Vaishnava. So that's not generally recommended process to go around biting the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas. But the lesson is that somehow or other if one is attached to the devotees, that is for one's eternal benefit. So the Prachetas, they consider themselves, in the previous verse, uh, they state, because of our being overly attached to family affairs, we almost forgot the instructions we received from Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. So whatever instructions we receive in transcendental knowledge, and particularly if we take them to heart, that will never be forgotten. And we see that again and again in the lives of devotees, uh, who have come under the shelter of Srila Prabhupada. They take to Krishna consciousness very seriously. They, after some time, make an attempt 
at very seriously forgetting those instructions and very seriously trying to become enjoyers of this material world. But when uh, Krishna, in his form of time, very kindly uh, arranges for them to realize that uh, I'm not going to be in this body much more time, then in many cases they uh, make a last dash back to Vrindavan or back to the association of devotees and make it back to Godhead or on the path back to Godhead. That's again not a recommended process. I remember many years ago one of my godbrothers who hasn't resurfaced since saying that, well, I think I've done enough Krishna conscious for this lifetime. Last seen heading from Bangladesh to New York City. Never heard of since. So it's not a recommended process. Whatever one does in Krishna consciousness, that is, from, I mean, may not be Vrindavan, but Indian man who was uh, helping oversee all the affairs here, which were, for the devotees coming from the West, which were extraordinarily difficult to navigate their way through, even now to manage the affairs of Iskon in Vrindavan, it's not the service, it's not an ordinary service. I've always thought that the town president in is Vrindavan is the most demanding and difficult service in the whole of ISKCON. But in those days, it was very, very difficult. Because devotees, they didn't know the language, they didn't know the culture, they were getting cheated all the time, the climate was very difficult, and there was no proper facilities, and on and on and on. And Pranav was a local man, and he was dedicated and helping. He left his home life, I don't know what he was doing, Gupta is usually well situated. They're usually businessmen or some well-paying job. And he was living with his wife in Vrindavan and serving Srila Prabhupada's mission. But Srila Prabhupada insisted again and again that Pranav cannot live with his wife. He's come to Vrindavan, even though they were not exactly old, but you could say late middle age. But Srila Prabhupada insisted that they have this level of renunciation. And eventually they left Vrindavan because they couldn't, they couldn't comply with that, which was uh, a blow for Srila Prabhupada's work here in getting the Krishna Balaram temple constructed. But Srila Prabhupada, he wasn't going to let them just uh, get away with that. Okay. You could say, well, they were living in Vrindavan. They weren't engaging in sense gratification. They were seriously engaged in service. But Srila Prabhupada wanted to show a standard of renunciation. Many years ago, uh, Dhanada Swami, when he was the uh, headmaster of the Gurukul here, he told me that Srila Prabhupada had said, that he wanted just 20, of course that was at that time, we may say this is not a, an eternal instruction. He said that he wanted 20 devotees only living at Krishna Balaram temple. But they should all be like this, the Goswamis of Vrindavan. They should be so exemplary and renounced that all the people of Vrindavan would see that and they would preach by their behavior. And another time, Maharaj told me, Srila Prabhupada, he said that some sadhus, they live only on bear fruits. Bear is a kind of fruit. In Sanskrit, I believe that's called badri, from which, which we get the badri kashram, badri narayana. So, I don't know how you could live on them because they're only seasonal fruits, but uh, they're not uh, gourmet fruits. They're very ordinary kind of fruit, not particularly nice flavor. 
And Srila Prabhupada said that our devotees, they should also do that. Now, he didn't insist on it. And maybe if some of our devotees did try to do that, he might have even stopped them because it's not a very uh, wholesome diet, rounded diet. Uh, but the, I, Srila Prabhupada was giving the idea that our devotees here should be very renounced. And Mataji Mantrani was making that point that we are supposed to, in the progress of our Krishna consciousness, we are supposed to become renounced and detached from this material world. So, what happened to the Chan Hare Krishna and Be Happy program? Just chant and be happy. Well, the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, they were chanting and dancing Krishna, Kirtana, Gana, Naratana, Puro. They were very attached to that. Glorifying Krishna, singing, dancing. But they were also Nidra, Hara, Vihara, Kadi, Vijito. They were also gave up practically eating, sleeping, comfort. Their, their program was chanting, dancing and fasting. Not eat, hardly eating. So that is not to be imitated, but the ideal is there, the ideal that we should follow. Prem is our prayoja. But, and we may say, well, that comes through bhakti. There's no need for all these talks of becoming detached and transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge that's generally understood to mean the distinction between spirit and matter means to understand that I am spirit. I am not the body. Therefore, I should have no attachments to the... I should not be attached to this world, they should not be attached to physical comfort and all these things. So that's, that's when we speak, generally uh, in India, when people speak of tattva or oh, which can be translated as philosophy, it's generally understood to mean this, this distinction between spirit and matter, these are the teachings of the Upanishads and the beginning teachings of Bhagavad Gita. So we may say that, well, if we just love Krishna, then everything comes from that. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojitaha Janiyatya Ashu Vairagyam Jnanam Chayadahai to come. If one is uh, serious in Bhakti Yoga to Vasudeva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prayojita means linked up, serious, seriously practicing. Then quickly uh, knowledge and detachment from this world, they will quickly arise. So we may say then what is the need to separately cultivate and uh, the answer is that in one sense there is no need to separately cultivate but on the other hand bhakti yoga one of the uh, important practices there are so many practices 64 practices 64 basic practices among which uh, five are considered the most important. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is considered five most important, among which one of them is Bhagavad Shravan, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. And here we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada here in Vrindavan, he would speak on these topics. He wouldn't speak only of Prem Lila. Although, in one sense, this also Prachetas, it's also. Prem Lila because it's by their life, by their example, they show us how to become prepared to go from our life of 
very deep material attachments. Dustaram bhavasagaram, here it's stated. This ocean of birth and death is very difficult to cross. So they show us by their example, and Srila Prabhupada would speak on these topics. Uh, Guru Das Prabhu, who was famously here in that Krishna Balaram temple uh, construction period, he narrated an anecdote of how he once met Srila Prabhupada in the airport in Delhi and they uh, went by taxi to Vrindavan. Uh, and uh, Guru Das Prabhu was waiting for Srila Prabhupada to say something. Srila Prabhupada is very quiet. And Guru Das Prabhu was thinking, uh, this is bliss. I'm with the, the greatest spiritual master, resident of Vrind natural resident of Vrindavan, going to Vrindavan. And what's he going to say? He was waiting for some katha. So eventually Prabhupada said one word, cement. <laughs> the word cement in and of itself doesn't usually, it's not an udipan or a, 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 an exciter. A, and what's the word in English? Uh, a inspiration? Inspiration for praying. Srila Prabhupada said, we have to get cement, because at that time cement was, uh, what's the word, rationed by the government of India. So was, they weren't getting enough cement. So Srila Prabhupada, his vision of Vrindavan, of course we can't say in full, but what he, one major aspect of what he manifested to us was the service to Vrindavan by constructing this temple. He, is a, he was a pragmatic Paramahamsa. Pragmatic Parivrajaka Acharya and Paramahamsa. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he took much trouble to teach us uh, teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam to teach future generations by uh, giving these instructions in Srimad Bhagavatam which uh, are required before we come to the tenth canto we should go through the other cantos and hear these instructions <coughs> of how <coughs> Uh, this material world, it is, we are bound in this material world due to attachment to this material world. Uh, we have to become released from that. Otherwise, uh, there's no question of actual love of God manifesting in the heart as long as there are material attachments. What is that? Bhukti Mukti Spriha Yavat Pishachi Hridi Vartate Tavat Bhakti Sukhasya Tra Katam Abhyudayo Bhavet. As long as the witch like desires for enjoyment of this material world or for liberation from it are in the heart, then what is the question? of actually experiencing the bliss of bhakti. So these topics should be discussed uh, and should be taken in the right spirit also. Sometimes it is considered that uh, there's this idea of bashing the grihastas by the sannyasis grihasta bashing well that is a duty of course sannyasis are also supposed to live 
in the spirit of the Goswamis. Uh, not to imitate, but to live in that spirit of not having material attachments. And Grihastas are supposed, to, not only Grihastas of course, but all devotees in all statuses of life, including sannyasis, should go on hearing these topics of how this material world, in the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, it is Bhishtagartha, Bhishtagartha, which means a ho this material world of specifically family life, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, is like a hole into which people pass stool. There's not much experience of that nowadays because we have uh, modern toilets. But holes into which people pass stool, they tend to become uh, hellish. There is a hell which Srila Prabhupada has saved me from of just like that, full of composted stool and you can be a, or I could have been a maggot in that. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives this uh, very severe comparison. He gave that about devotees actually. They weren't non-devotees but they were not cultivating pure devotional service. They were pious men. Hiranya and Govardhan Majumda, the father and uncle of Raghunathas, the most renounced devotee in the history of our Sampradaya. So Chaitanya Mahabharu said that and those who have the uh, culture to understand, they will actually thank others who speak this to them. They'll be very thankful that you're telling us to... Uh, tell it, reminding us. It may not be that the... Uh, may not be expected that the Grihastha will immediately leave everything, but there should come a time, as Srila Prabhupada often quoted, Panchas Aurdhvang Vanang Vrajet, and he personally lived that, that at the age of 50 one should no longer remain in family affairs. One should come out of that and engage fully in Krishna consciousness. So this should be heard, meditated upon and acted upon. Otherwise, we run the danger of coming back again. What's the best service we can do to Srila Prabhupada? Well, individually, for every follower of Srila Prabhupada, the major service they can do is to practice Krishna consciousness so seriously that they become eligible to go back home, back to Godhead in this life. That they don't take birth again. As Srila Prabhupada wrote in one letter, he was writing about preaching. And at the end of the letter he wrote that the, the highest realization is to save oneself. Now, in one sense, we can't save ourselves either because we're dependent on the mercy of Krishna. But we can take the mercy of Krishna as is manifested. Krishna manifests himself in his instructions, which he gives in Bhagavad Gita, which he gives in Srimad Bhagavatam, which he gives via the uh, devotees, parampara. He gives the instructions by which we can... Uh, detach our mind from matter 
and attach it to Krishna. Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita again and again. Ananya chinta yantamam, ananya cheta satatam, manmana, always think of me. So that's the ultimate, but even prior to that, Krishna, he gives uh, instructions in uh, becoming the, the first instructions for transcendentalists are that the mind should be removed from sense gratification. Prajahati yada kaman. What is the next line? Prajahati yada kaman sarvan parta mano gatan atman yeva atmano tushta sthita dhir sthita dhir muni ruchate that uh, when a person is completely removed his mind uh, all the desires that arise in the mind for sense gratification and he's fixed in the self then he's said to be a sage of fixed intelligence and in the purport in this series of verses Srila Prabhupada tells us how to, the best way to do that Savai Manakri, he quotes he cites Ambarish Maharaj, Savai Mana Krishna, Padara Vinda Yoho, Vachansi Vaikunta, Gunanu Varnane. The mind should be placed at the lotus feet of Krishna. The word should be glorifying the qualities of Krishna. And so on, all the senses should be engaged in the service of Krishna. The point is there, though, that one has to. Uh, remove the mind from this sense gratification which binds one in material life. So, Prem Katha, discussion of Prem in the land of Prem. <coughs> uh, but we should know well what Prem is. Prem <coughs> is manifest in this world in its perverse form. <coughs> as material desire. Atendriya priti vancha tare bale kam Krishnaindriya priti icha dhare premana So love for Krishna, which is the natural characteristic of every living being, it is manifested in this world in a desire to satisfy our own senses. So this Jnanam tattvarta darshanam, uh, understanding this. This is a understanding the difference between spirit and matter. This is a tool given not only to impersonalists, but to devotees also, we find throughout Bhagavatam, to help us to advance toward the desired platform of pure devotional service of Krishna. <coughs> Because we, t we, most of the time we act without thinking. We don't think about everything. We, life, most of our life goes on in a functional way. We don't think specifically, now I should put my left foot forward and now my right foot forward, now I should breathe in, now I should breathe out. So many things we do without thinking. And Maya is there to always pull us so that we may uh, do things where we, we feel attraction. The, the, the time between the thought of Maya or the thought of acting on the basis of material attraction and the impulse to, f to fulfill that desire for non-transcendentalists, it just goes automatically. They d you see it, you want it, you go for it. But the transcendentalist has to restrain himself, as Krishna also says, Kuramon Angiva Saravashaha. One has to withdraw the senses, like the tortoise. But if our consciousness is programmed for sense gratification, 
then our self-realization program will it won't happen so regularly hearing this transcendental knowledge distinguishing between spirit and matter it's a matter of reprogramming our consciousness tamasi maj yotir gamaya coming out of the darkness to the light changing consciousness that our senses are always attracted to the objects of the senses for the sake of sense gratification which binds us in this material world so we that training is there the positive side always think of krishna we're not there we're striving to come to that platform in the meantime uh, as long as our senses are not on the platform of being fully absorbed in love of krishna then that help is there that reminder always di differentiate anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjana i should always act in a manner that is conducive for advancement in krishna consciousness and not act in an opposite way so this uh, knowledge which the prajetas they already got previously they're asking narada to again speak that to them so they can come out of the fog of uh, desires which have arisen due to material attachment which is covering their real knowledge hari krishna this according to my watch two and a half minutes if anyone would like to with two and a half minutes before the end of the specified time so if anyone would like to ask a question you may do so now if not hari krishna hari krishna you have a question krishna krishna hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari please get the mic to mataji who is performing austerities at the back of the temple room standing up on the tips of your toes maybe performing severe austerities oh you got a good strong voice yeah shila <coughs> prabhat said muni nam was the word before that oh not quite strong enough for me to hear fully can it be relayed what's being said <laughs> muni means thoughtful muni nam means thoughtful plural the thoughtful muni nam amalat nanam Okay, it's become a uh, obligatory to say that. It's become a formality. Everyone's hairs are standing on end with wonder. All right. So, what is the question? The Prabhupada says, "Once it's money, as you said, not money now. Money is powerful. He can only think, only he can think that he is not this body, but he is a soul, because he is powerful. So how?" Uh, like we are learning and uh, learning. well i don't remember specifically a quote like that i'm not saying shila prabha didn't say that but i don't remember re hearing that i i heard it from his lecture that one who is thoughtful i see thoughtful, all right one who is thoughtful yeah yeah he can think that he is not his body he can realize it uh. also as you say self realization will not come if we are not very serious so my question is like we hear commonly saying But those who chant Hare Krishna mantra because it is very powerful, they will achieve the destination. How should we understand because it is not cheap? One who is thoughtful, they can understand they are not the body. They have to receive knowledge also. There is a whole history of Western philosophy, and they didn't even make it to A B C in real philosophy because they don't understand the difference between the soul and the body. they've got this whole massive philosophical edifice based on sand 
They don't know anything. They don't know anything about reality, actually, although they talk about it upside down, inside out, and ad nauseum. So, uh, thoughtfulness, yes, but first one should hear. So, is chanting Hare Krishna enough? Why, why all this knowledge? Just chant Hare Krishna. That's the proposition. Why do we have to be thoughtful and discuss all these things? Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam. Holy name is all in all. You just have to chant. I've discussed this many times. I'll say it again briefly. Kirtan means Shravan Kirtan. Just like you can, we can say Krishna, generally we say Krishna, but if we are to properly say Krishna, we should say Sri Krishna or Radha Krishna. Krishna is not fully... Sri, Sri means Radha. So in the same way, Kirtan means Shravan Kirtan. When we say Kirtan, it means Shravan Kirtan. Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Karayayudha. Krishna Prem arises through the nine processes beginning with Shravan. So Kirtan without Shravan is not actually Kirtan. It's, it's a not proper, it's not going to be proper. So many Mayavadis, they also chant the holy names of Krishna. But they, they are making offenses at every breath. So hearing must be there. The two are inseparable. Without hearing, we won't have a clear understanding of what we are chanting, who we are chanting, whose name we are chanting, why we are chanting. And without hearing tattva jnana, darshana, then we're, we're inevitably we'll make offenses to the holy name because these ten offenses, they mostly rest on misconceptions which can only be cleared by hearing Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam, the scientific knowledge of Krishna consciousness as given in, specifically in Srimad Bhagavatam. So hearing is required. It's not just chanting, chanting, chanting. That will benefit, but... Oh, there's so much can be said on this. I won't go on now because that's another whole lecture, or two or three or lifetimes. Hmm. What do I mean by Krishna consciousness? What do I mean? I, I am insignificant. What does Krishna consciousness mean? Consciousness means awareness. In one's consciousness, there is Krishna. Krishna means the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's the answer in brief. For further information, come to class every day and read Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> what do you mean by Krishna consciousness? Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai. Every devotee has their own consciousness of Krishna, their own personal relationship with Krishna. Hare Krishna, all glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki.